How's it going, everybody? Well, here we go. We're going to start the Simplify uh, battery installation on our off-grid house. Uh, it's taken me a while to get to this point because I didn't get the wall mount brackets with these, but I did come up with kind of a revolutionary way to install these batteries. Um, this is the Outback IBR3. Um, this is really made for their front mount AGM batteries. Um, I've used these in a project before. I used them in the Silicon Valley. And I had this and it really has a lot of key features that I think is going to be great for other people to install with. I have the ability to go buy bus bars, build crazy custom Flexware 1000s and do some really neat stuff. But what I did is I took this enclosure, I pulled the factory battery cables out of it because they basically had one positive and one negative for each row. Um, I don't want to parallel these batteries from positive to negative to each battery. You know, the guidelines for these batteries say um, a, a single cable run from each battery to the point of connection. They, they do not recommend paralleling from positive to positive to positive to negative to negative and connecting like we do a dual lead acid battery. All recommendations say to run individual cables equal length and connect them on a combine point. So this allows you to kind of do that. Um, the IBR3 has a, um, has a negative kind of combine on one side, it has a positive on the other side where all of the breakers go to a combined bus plate. So even though um, we are going from the two parallel positive cables to the breaker and then going to another cable, it, I think we're still running kind of the same cable lengths even though we're bridging on here. The reason that I really liked this, after getting a couple Simplify installs under my belt, I found one of the things that I really wanted out of my personal build is I wanted, the, I wanted two abilities that I achieved in the IBR3. I want the ability to shut off what I would call a string or a row um, with a 175 amp breaker, which is rated already for both the, it exceeds the 80 amp breaker that's on board of the Simplify battery. So by turning off 175 amp, I can turn on one battery at a time to do any testing that I want to. That's another downside to doing a full parallel connection is if you need to test anything or you have any questions on uh, where one individual battery is sitting, um, you can't do that. You have to turn the whole system off. This actually will let me test a row, um, do anything I need to. If I have a problem, I can just shut one battery down, two batteries down. It really gives me some flexibility. I can try running on two batteries for my house. This just gives me a lot of uh, different abilities. They also make an IBR2 um, Outback does, and I'm pretty sure from my understanding that my version of this is going to go into production pretty soon so that it allows you guys to put six of these batteries in super fast. You're not going to have to worry about making cables, about doing the parallel connection point. You're going to be able to buy an IBR3, six simplified batteries, get it on site, and all you're going to have to do is connect your 4 aught battery cable from the IBR3 to your Radian GSLC. Now another thing that is really a, a great benefit to the way that they did the IBR3 is I'm able to get six of the simplified batteries in there. Um, they sent me uh, six of the 3.5, so I'm going to have about 21 kilowatt hours of storage, which is a pretty big stack of batteries. Six batteries also fits their guidelines of the recommended um, battery to inverter ratio for the Radian 8000 watt inverter. I think they spec for their new guidelines of, of how many of their batteries they want per unit. I think they're about 5.4 or something like that. Um, this is going to give me six batteries. So that's great. I'm currently running um, two Outback 3648 VFX inverters. So the one thing that I'll, I'll have an issue with there is my charging capacity could be higher. So I'm contemplating uh, purchasing four of uh, the, uh, the new uh, FXR inverters and I'll replace that stack with some updated, which is also going to give me a benefit of, I think they have a higher LBCO, the low battery cutout. So I'm not going to have to do some of the stuff that I'm going to show you later with using my FlexNet to control the inverter to protect it for low battery shutdown. Another thing that I was able to do that, uh, that's not factory with the IBR3 is I actually mounted a FlexNet in it. Um, I added three shunts. I used a FlexWare 1000 bus bar to combine all these shunts. So I'm actually going to be able to monitor all three channels. I incorporated the FlexNet in the unit and I stuck a Hub 4 on here. Now, if you follow some of my other videos, I said I had another groundbreaking moment. Uh, I'm sure it's been done. I talked to some other people, but it's never quite been done the way I did it. I took the output of the second mate port on the Hub 10, and I'm going to feed it into the port 1 of this Hub 4. And all testing purposes so far, it's powered up the Hub, it's powered up the FlexNet and a separate mate 3. And I'm going to be able to aggregate all of that data in the cloud into optics, and I'm going to be able to see channel level 
um, of all of my three strings of Simplify batteries to see that I really have truly uh, even flow input and output wise end of these batteries. So it's really going to give me a battery status monitor for these simple Simplify batteries to get some solid data of what's really going on. And that's going to be what tells me whether I have a problem or not. So I'm super excited to start this. I have a lot of time in building this rack, getting them to this point. Uh, we had to build also, um, we had to build a custom base for the battery rack because it's in a power room that was built uh, previously and it has some slope. So I built a kind of prefab base that the rack will sit on that we're going to trim the feet to make it level, sit flush against the wall so that we can bolt it so it's secure. And I also needed to raise it up a little bit to fit the factory holes with my gutter. Um, my power room, if you guys have seen it kind of evolve, um, this was something I never thought I would get to do. So this solved kind of a couple different problems and uh, it's going to make it kind of an easy install. Let's go in the power room and I'll give you guys kind of an overview of what we're going to do. So uh, these are some batteries that I pulled out of a project that had a little bit of life left in them and uh, it worked out great because the lead acids that I had uh, they, I was starting to lose some cells. I was really hard in the, in, on them in the beginning of the project. And so these bought me a little bit of time. They're also at the end of their life. And so the next step that we're doing is we're going to remove the three foot gutter. We're going to put a two foot gutter in here with some conduit work. We're going to have the IBR three, which is going to mount in the center. And I have plenty of room on the right hand side to mount our new skybox. Uh, if you've seen any of our Instagram posts, uh, that's where we post a lot more uh, quick updates, Outback sent us the new Skybox. We're beta testers for it, so we're really excited to see what the Skybox is gonna do and give you guys some updates because a lot of people have been really excited about that. So enough talking, uh, we're gonna hook up the GoPro and get you guys some video of what it did to install this and give you some tips along the way. Thanks.